So as I talked about a couple of videos ago in the, uh, when I talk about token authentication, we are gonna be using Django token authentication to authenticate users on the server. So if they're using a mobile app, doop, 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 do, they got their phone, they are gonna send a request to the server, get a token, and then once they have that token, they can access any of the other data on the server. So there's a, there's a couple of things we can leverage with Django here. Uh, Django has kind of a built-in system for generating these tokens, and it also has some built-in URLs that we can take advantage of to return the tokens to the user when they enter their username and password, for example. So there's gonna be kind of three sort of steps to this procedure. Number one is we need to create a database table that holds the tokens. So it'll be, you know, a database table literally called tokens with each user in it, then they have their own unique token in it. It's gonna have a foreign key relationship to the account table. Uh, then every time a user logs in, uh, a token is generated. So if they visit the URL like, you know, your domain slash API slash account slash login, it's gonna generate an authentication token if they log in with their correct email and password. So basically it's just gonna generate a token put it into the token table, and then return that token to the user through the request. Then once they have that, that token, they can attach it to the header of any of the other requests that they make to the server. And we have some other built-in Django stuff that we're gonna implement for permissions um, and restrictions, basically, that will check to see if that token is there. And if that token matches the email that they, they, set, they are uh, signed in with. So a bunch of stuff going on. And um, we're gonna take a look at the guide first because there's a, there's, a, there's a guide on the documentation that actually outlines this pretty well. So we're in the Django docs here and I'm in API guide slash authentication. So you could just click here, go to authentication, which is what I'm on. And I'm in this at the section labeled how authentication is determined. And I actually, I encourage you to just read like, at least read the beginning of this doc. So it says authentication, just read down to like, down to like here, like read this stuff. Basically what it says is how authentication is determined on the server, and then it goes on to talk about the different ways that you could be authenticated. So first of all, it says how authentication is determined. There's a bunch of different ways. So there's basic authentication, token authentication, session, remote user, custom authentication. So what we're gonna be using is token authentication. And if you go down to the token authentication section, it says, down here that this is great for uh, native desktop and mobile clients. So this is ex this is perfect for what we're doing, mobile clients. So if you go up to the top, there's kind of a basic procedure that you need to follow. It says that setting the authentication scheme. So we need to add this REST framework declaration to the settings.py file, and then we need to define the authentication backend that we're gonna be using. In that case, in this, in this example that they're showing in the doc, they're using basic authentication and session authentication, but we're gonna be using token authentication. So let's, uh, let's follow the first step. So I'm gonna copy this, go to our project. I have a bunch of stuff open, I'm gonna close it all. I'm going to minimize this so we can get a good look at what's happening here. Uh, I've, I'm gonna expand my site, go into settings.py, and maybe just below the installed apps, I'm gonna paste in that REST framework declaration. I'm gonna delete the second session authentication and I'm gonna change this to token authentication because that's the only type of authentication we are gonna be using on the server. And basically what this does, by declaring this, Django knows that uh, if, if I set any, if I set an is authenticated permission to any of the views, which you'll see later on, it knows that I'm talking about token authentication and it knows to look for that token in the header of the request. That probably made no sense to you, but I'm gonna revisit this later when we actually go through that process so that you'll, uh, you'll remember what I said. So let's go back to the docs here. And now it just talks about the different types of views that you can use. So here, the first view is a class-based view. We are, we're gonna be using a class-based view, I think one class-based view later on in the course, but not in this video. We are gonna be focusing mostly on function-based views. So just like we've been doing, you define a function view and then return some stuff through a response. So here's actually what I was talking about by the permission classes. So if you'll notice there's a couple annotations here the authentication classes annotation and the permission classes annotation. The permission classes annotation, uh, you can specify what kind of permissions you need to be able to see any particular view. So like in the case of this app, we're using token authentication. So if I pass the is authenticated class, which is a pre-built class, you can see it's imported from the rest framework.permissions package. 
it's a pre-built pre-built class and what it does is it looks into your settings.py file and it looks to see what rest framework default authentication classes you've defined here so because we've defined token authentication that means that this is authenticated class will say okay he's defined token authentication let's see if there's a token in the request and then if there is a token and it's valid, it will allow them to see the view. Otherwise, it will return a response that says you don't have permission to view this. So that, that's a really, really cool thing about Django. Like there's just all these pre-built functions that do so much work for you behind the scenes and you don't have to do anything really. So that's what that is authenticated um, class will do and we're gonna be using that. The authentication classes are the different types of authentication. So that's that basically tells the permission class which type of authentication class you're gonna use. So in our case, we won't have these two, we're gonna have token authentication obviously. So that is, uh, that's the explanation, now let's, let's get to it. So let's go down to token authentication. It looks like the, uh, the first step here it tells us to do is that we need to add rest framework.auth token to the installed apps. So let's do that. Let's go to our settings.py file, add rest framework auth token, pressing control S to save that. And then it tells you that we need to migrate because it's gonna generate a bunch of stuff. So this is actually gonna generate that tokens table that I talked about, I'm pretty sure. So manage.py, migrate, let's see what it does. Looks like it generates an auth token table, I believe. I'll do make migrations just to make sure. Manage.py, make migrations just to make sure that there's nothing that needs to be applied. Nope, we're good to go. And now manage.py, run that server. So now we're pretty much done with the docs because now it's up to us to implement the functionality that we need. So I'm gonna go to our project. And uh, so let's talk about, that was a plane going over by, so I'm just gonna hold on a sec here, wait for it to pass. Okay, the plane's pretty much gone. So there's two situations where we need to generate a token. Number one is when a user registers. When a user registers, just like we did in the previous video, uh, if I was to register a new user, we get like uh, we get a response. Uh, I guess I'll just just to show you, I'll just generate a new user. Uh, generate a new user. So we get this response. We also want to generate a token and return that token in the response. That way, when they register right away, they can start using the app because they'll have access to that token. So that's the first one. The next one is going to be. Uh, when a user logs in. So that'll look like, it'll look kind of like this. If I was to just copy this URL, uh, suppose they've already registered, obviously. We need to create a URL where they can log in and pass their username and password. So it's gonna be a post request, They're gonna, or they'll pass their email and password. It'll be email, you know, whatever their email is, and then their password and whatever their uh, password is. And then it should return a response that holds that token. We don't need to return anything else. We can just return the token because that's essentially what it means to be authenticated. Once they have that token, they can use the REST API to its full functionality and do whatever they want. So, so that's what we're gonna work on. So registration, we wanna generate a token and return it. Login, we want to return a token because they should already have one that's been generated. And if they didn't, we can check to make sure. All right, so let's go into account API, actually not API, we, we, we wanna go into account.models uh, because when a user, when a new account is created, we wanna generate that token. So a good place to do that is just in the model. We can create a post save receiver that will generate a token when a new user object is saved to the database. So coming up to the top here, I need to do some imports from Django dot, whoops, I need from, from Django, not form, from django.conf import settings so we can get access to, actually I don't know if we need settings, but anyway, from django.db.models.signals import post save, we definitely need that. From django.dispatch import receiver from rest framework.authtoken.models import token. So now after we have those imports, I'm gonna scroll down and create that post save receiver. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna write at receiver. This is gonna be a post save receiver. The sender is gonna be, ah uh, yes, that's what I needed the settings for. I thought I needed that. The auth user model and uh, then define it. So create auth token, the name doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna call it create auth token. The sender, which is gonna be the account that's gonna be saved to the database. Instance can be none created equals false and then keyword arguments. 
So then I just want to say if created, if a user object is created, or sorry, if a, a account object is created and inserted and saved into the database, I want to generate a token. So token.objects.create, then I want to say user equals instance. And that's going to be it. So now every single time a user is registered to the server, uh, a token will be generated. And we can test this. So I'll go to the server. I'm going to log in and go to the admin. I'm going to delete these two test emails that I created earlier. I'm just going to delete these. Um, also notice if I go to home, there's now a tokens table. And inside the tokens table, there is nothing. So what I want to do is I want to generate tokens through registration. So I can just, uh, you know, I can use this same user because I just deleted it. I'll click enter. That means they were registered. Now let's go to the token table. And now there is that token with that user associated with it. So this, this user now has an authentication token that they can query to use the API. Well, I guess we don't have the view set up yet, but we actually do have a token. And uh, so now you're probably wondering, well, what do we do about these other users? Well, I'm going to delete these two because we don't need them. They were just for testing anyway. The only problem here is going to be this one. So we, we do need a way to generate a token for the admin user. And I actually recommend just, um, just deleting everybody and then creating a new super user. That way you're, you're still going to use the systems that are in place. You're not kind of overriding the system. There are ways to generate a token um, through the admin. So I think if you, if you browse through here, I remember I saw something where you could generate a token through the admin or like kind of manually. But I mean, I think, you know, I would just as soon um, just delete everybody. So I'm just going to actually delete Mitch at Tavian.ca, which is the super user. And I'm just going to create a new super. Oh, I just deleted the wrong one. Oh, well, let's delete them all. We're deleting them all. Goodbye. Now everybody is deleted and I'm going to create a new super user. So Python manage.py create super user. And now I'm going to go through the process of creating a new super user. So Mitch, my password. Now I'm going to run the server. And go back to the admin. Now I should have, there's that new super user. And if I go to the token table, I have a token for that user. And if I was to register a new user, and I go back to the token table, there's another token generated. So now we have our whole system is in place and it's working correctly. So now the next situation we have, we have it working for registration. Now the next situation is getting it working when a user logs in. So we need to generate a token when a user logs in. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. We also need to return that token through the response because remember when we're registering, we want to return that. So I'm going to go into account.views in the API section and I want to query the token that has been generated. So I'm going to write token equals token dot objects dot get and do user equals account and then do dot key to get that token and then do data token equals token and then that will return it. And of course, I still need to import token from the rest framework. So from rest framework dot auth token dot models import token. There we go. So now if a user registers, um, it, when I save it, the, the token will be generated and then we can return that token right here to the response. So now we're ready to work on logging in. So what happens when a user logs in? How do we generate a token when a user logs in? This is actually very simple because of the Django REST framework, some built-in functionality. So I'm coming into our urls.py and I'm actually just going to copy this, change this URL to login, and this view is going to be obtain auth token. So it's an obtain auth token view. And this is going to be login. And of course, I need to import that view. So from rest framework dot auth token dot views import obtain auth token. So what this is going to do is it's a built in Django view. What it does is it looks for the user model for your project. So if I go into my site, go into settings, and I scroll down and I look for the auth user model, which is referencing my account model. It looks for that and it asks for the required parameters to log in a user based on that user model. So in our case, that means the username or the email and the password. So all I need to do is send a request to this URL containing the email and the password, and it will return 
it will generate a token upon successful login. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, first, let's actually test the registration because uh, we changed something there because now it should return a token. So I have a new email, new username. I'm going to click send. There's the token being returned, so that's working good. Now let's try to log in. So Mitch at Tabian.ca is one of the users. His password is password. Let's click send. I believe that's all I need and see. Um, oh, right. So this is kind of a weird thing about Django. So it says username, this field is required. So because by default, Django, the Django user model uses the field username to log in, but we have overridden that and set the username field to the email. Um, but by default, all of kind of the prepackaged views still use that username um, field name, I guess I would say. Uh, so I still need to declare username as the key, even though I'm passing the email. It's kind of a weird thing. I really don't like this about Django. It's, it's a very confusing thing. But um, just kind of know that by default, generally Django assumes you're going to log in with a username, but we've overridden that to use the email. So you still have to use the username key. So now if I click send, it will return that token. Um, so yeah, and I think it generates a new token every time you log in. Looks like, no, that one's the same. So every time you log in, you will return the same token. But the point of it all is that you do generate a token and, and the view is kind of pre-built and um, you don't have to do very much. So now the next thing we're gonna work on is permissions. So as I talked about in the beginning of the video and we took a look at the Django documentation, if we take a look at the view examples here, you have to pass a permission class. We're gonna be using the is authenticated class and we need to be passing authentication classes uh, also in this other annotation. And that's gonna restrict access basically. So uh, it will, if, if a user isn't authenticated through the method that's declared through the authentication class, then they won't have access to the view. And that's how we restrict users who don't have a valid token to uh, use the REST API on the server.